Now that we've created a row format and a column layout, let's move on to part three and put the pieces together in our catalog of reports. I'm going to open up a catalog of report, and it, right now I don't have any entries in there, so it just gave me a little message there. The first thing it asks us is about a catalog ID. Again, this is that 16 unique digit that we create, or a combination of characters we create, to identify one report from the next. So we'll just call this rolling quarter. And we'll give it a little more descriptive name right here. Rolling quarter um, statement. Actually, let's call it rolling quarter P&L. We'll make sure we have the right company selected. And for our detail right now, we'll just choose financial report since each line represents a unique account number. Under our building blocks, we'll choose our row format that we created. We'll use the gross profit line. And then to column layouts, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead, nor most of you are used to just selecting a column layout. And if we do that, that's great. But remember we accounted for those two odd periods if we print this report for January or February. So what we want to do here is click on this effective date button. And when we do so, it's going to give us the ability to edit more, P more column layouts. So now I'll click on column layout. And I'm going to use period numbers. So I'm just going to come down here and say when all my periods there and now I can tell it which column layout I want to use for each period. So for January I want this one which remember we just went back into the historical year for two periods. For February I want this one where we just went back into December and then for all the rest of them I want rolling quarter. So now this one report is utilizing three separate column layouts, depending on the quarter. Oops. Let me select them all. So depending on our base period, it'll figure out um, our base reporting period. It'll look at the period and get the column layout from there and I'll click OK. One other thing I want to do since I'm not using a tree right now under my page options and header footer the name is going to come from my reporting tree right now and I don't necessarily want that so what I want to do is change this to get my my report name from the description in the catalog. So I'm going to choose from the list here catalog description. So now it'll put rolling quarter P&L as opposed to leaving a blank line. Now the only thing that you have to do when you're printing a report, uh, when you're putting something in a catalog report, it must be saved. Remember in the row you either had to have something in the format column or the link to GL column, column C and H. In the column you had to have a description column and in the catalog you have to save it. So I'm going to choose to save. I'm going to change my reporting period to match the dates in Fabricam. So we'll print for period 12, year 2017, and I'll click on Generate Report. And now there's my report, looking at December, November, and October. Let's print the report again, but this time let's print it for January 2017. And one of the things, before I click OK, you'll notice that the column layout name is going to automatically change there because it knows to look at a different column layout. I'll generate the report again. And now you'll notice it goes January, December, and November, and these are actually previous years. Wonderful. Now, you could also do some formatting for the column description name up here. Let's do that. We'll close that out, go back to page header, and let's clean these font styles up a little bit so it looks better. We'll just make them all header in blue, except maybe the date. We'll leave that. We'll click on Save, and we'll generate the report again. That's beautiful. Hope this helps. Next time, we'll look at reporting trees.